everyone, I'm Sarah of Red Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Glacier Cowl, which you can see here in front of you. This is the third pattern in the Midwinter Crochet Along, if you're following along on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. All the details for that uh, crochet along can be found in the link provided in the description of this video. So this is the cowl we're working on today. It is the third pattern in the Glacier set, which also includes a beanie and a twisted ear warmer. Those patterns you can also find here on my channel. So this cowl measures approximately 14 by 9 inches when it's laid flat. It's a great size for an adult or a teen. Uh, if you would like to change the size of the cowl, I'll give you instructions later on in the video to do so. For the pattern today, I'm using a scarfy yarn by Lion Brand. It's a bulky weight yarn. Uh, there's about 312 yards in each ball and you're going to need about three quarters of the ball, so about 210 yards or so for your cowl. You're also going to need a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and you'll find links to both of these in the description of this video. You'll also find the link to the free written pattern, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe. Take a look around. This channel is updated weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. Our pattern today is worked in rounds. And uh, we're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain, and your foundation chain is going to be a total of 95 chain stitches. If you would like to change the size of your cowl, you can use any stitch count, any multiple for this pattern. So simply chain this foundation chain to your desired size. At the moment, we're going to chain 95. Once you've worked your foundation chain of 95 chain stitches, without twisting your chain, what I do like to do is just kind of run my fingers along it, make sure there's no twists or turns in it. Without twisting your chain, you're going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. I'm joining in the back bumps of my stitch. Uh, it's all personal preference. I just like the way that it looks on the opposite side when I'm finished. So join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. You're then going to chain one and for round one work one half double crochet stitch in each chain all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch. At the end of round one, once again, make sure that your work is not twisted and then join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. We're now going to work three more rounds, uh, rounds two through to four of half double crochet stitches, but this time working them in the third loop. So to find your third loop, chain one, do not turn your work, and then pulling your work forward so that you're looking at the back of your stitch, you will see your top back loop here and under it there is another loop that runs parallel to it and this is your third loop. 
So we're going to be working in this third loop only. So yarn over, insert your hook into that third loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. You're going to work one half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch all the way around. When you come to the first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your stitch, chain one, and then work another round. So you're going to work three rounds in total of half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch. And you're going to see that it's pushing the tops of your stitch forward. So go ahead, work rounds two, three, and four, half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch all the way around, chain one, work the next round, and uh, then meet me back here. At the end of your round four, you'll have your three rounds of half double crochet in the third loop. For round five, you're ready to begin your herringbone single crochet stitch rounds. Now, depending on whether or not the right side or the wrong side of your work is facing, uh, will determine how you work this stitch. It's worked slightly differently uh, when the wrong side is facing. So what we're going to do, we have the right side of our work facing. You do not turn your work. Chain one. You're going to begin working in this first stitch, the same stitch as joining, and make a single crochet stitch. You're then going to work your first herringbone single crochet stitch and to do so you're going to first insert your hook under the loop or the bar that's in the post of the stitch you just worked. So insert your hook under that loop and then under both loops of the next stitch in your round yarn over draw up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So when you're counting your stitches, your single crochet stitch does count as a stitch. So I have two stitches worked here. You're going to continue for this round five to work herringbone single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. So to work your next stitch, once again, under the farthest loop of the post of the stitch you just worked, insert your hook, then under both loops of the next stitch in your round, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. So continue to work these stitches all the way around you'll have 95 stitches including that single crochet stitch uh, when you come back to your first stitch and then join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. At the end of round five, chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work another round of herringbone stitches, this time working reverse single crochet herringbone stitches. To begin in your first stitch, you're going to work a reverse single crochet stitch. To do so, you're going to bring your hook in back of your work and insert your hook through from the back to the front, yarn over, pull up a loop, and complete your single crochet stitch. Then to work the reverse herringbone single crochet stitches, you're going to, at the back of your work, which is actually the right side, you're going to insert your hook through that loop 
on the post of your stitch and then under both loops of the next stitch in your round this time again working from back through to front yarn over draw up your loop yarn over and pull through all three you're going to continue doing that all the way around and then join with a slip stitch in that first stitch chain one and turn your work you're then for the rest of the body of your cowl you're going to work 12 more rounds of herringbone stitches so you're going to repeat rounds five and six six more times then after that you can meet me back here at the end of each of these rounds don't forget to join with a slip stitch and then chain one and turn your work so go ahead repeat rounds five and six so finish this round six and then repeat rounds five and six for a total of six more times a total of 12 rounds and uh, then meet me back here at the end of round 18. at the end of round 18 this is what your work should look like down from the bottom up to the top you'll have ended on a round six so you have the wrong side facing you'll want to chain one and turn your work and if you have made it longer or shorter you're going to want the right side of your fabric facing you for your next round round 19 you're going to work a half double crochet stitch into each stitch all the way around when you come back to the first stitch join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch chain one do not turn your work at the end of your round 19 you've joined with a slip stitch into that first stitch chain one do not turn your work now for rounds 20 21 and 22 you're going to work a half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch all the way around join with the slip stitch in the top of your first stitch chain one do not turn your work and then work that next round of half double crochets in the third loop once you've worked three rounds of half double crochet in the third loop the top of your cowl should match that down at the bottom you're then going to join fasten off weave in your ends and your glacier cowl is complete so that's all there is to working this beautiful cowl thank you so much again for joining me once again i invite you to subscribe take a look around and i look forward to seeing you next time until then happy crocheting bye mm -hmm.